This is the Maytech F411 wing flight controller and is made especially for fixed wing aircraft. So if you're thinking about using it for a quadcopter, don't. This is best for airplanes. One of the reasons is it only has two motor outputs right here and it also only has two signal outputs for the motors S1 and S2. So here's the specs, it has five servo outputs, four here and one on a pad. And there's S1 and S2 for the motor outputs, and there's S3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 for the servos. And there's some places here to hook on an S-Bus receiver and a PPM receiver up here. And there's some information here on the side that you can see how to do it. I'm going to be using the PPM receiver for my project, which is the FT Legacy RC plane. And it's going to have twin engines and differential thrust, so that's what I'm going to configure. Now I can't answer questions on other types of receivers because I've just used PPM, but you can probably configure SBUS. So there's a chart down here where it shows you can use the SBUS on the SBUS port and the GPS on serial port 2, and you can put the FreeSky smart port on ST1. But this chart gives you SBUS, F port, PPM, Crossfire, and Spectrum, but I've just used the PPM so far. You can go ahead and connect the servos up according to what you have picked in the mixer. In this case, we have a wing, so we're going to use S3 and S4. Here's S3 and S4 for the servos, and you have voltage and ground. The voltage is usually 5 volts, but you can solder this jumper to get 6 volts. There's also a connection for an LED strip and a buzzer. So let's go ahead and download the iNav firmware, the iNav configuration tool, ZA dig for the USB port, and you've seen this other link previously. I'll put all of these links in the description under the video. So the first thing we want to do is download the iNav configuration tool. So I'm going to click this link and go to GitHub and download the zip file right here. Let's download the iNav firmware, so let's click this link and we'll get the latest version which is 2.0 and the file we're looking for is the Maytech F411 hex. And finally let's get ZA dig. It's the thing that fixes the USB port. It's kind of strange where you find the link. Just scroll down here. It's this little link right here and these are the directions on how to use it in case you don't understand what I'm doing. And so let's get it now. So let's unzip the iNav configuration tool. I'm just going to right click it, open a new window so I have a second window. And then I'm going to take the folder and drag it back in over here. And you can see that is unzipping, so we're just going to let it unzip. And then we're going to get the exe file and run it and bring up iNav configurator. Now if your PC doesn't like it, just click more info and then click run anyway and it should come up. What we want to do is hold down this button on the F411 wing and then plug in the USB cable and when we do we should get a solid red light. If this is the first time you've ever flashed it probably won't work because the USB port will be wrong. So while it's in the USB firmware mode after pressing the button and plugging it in it's a good time to run ZA dig. So run it, go to options, choose all installed devices, pick the SDM bootloader and then install the Windows driver. I've already used the ADIG to replace my Windows USB driver once, but I'll just go ahead and hit reinstall to show you how it works. Now we're going to leave the USB cable plugged in and the board running, and we're going to go back to iNav configurator. We're going to be doing the firmware flashing, so we're not going to connect to the board. We're just going to click flash firmware, and then we're going to pick no boot sequence and full chip erase. We're going to load the firmware, and we're going to click load local, and we're going to find the file. We know it was on the desktop in the new folder, and there it is, it's the hex file. And then click flash firmware. You can see it's erasing right now, and now flashing. So you can see the lights are starting to blink, so it's not in firmware mode anymore. So we can go ahead and disconnect the USB cable. All right, we can plug it back in. The lights start blinking again, and we should be able to connect. And there it is. You can see if I move the board, it starts rocking around on the screen. And you can see now, instead of looking like a quadcopter, it actually looks like a block. Okay, and now we'll get into the configuration of the board. iNav has got very user friendly, and you can see this message up here where it says mixer not configured and we need to set it up. Now right now we've got a quadcopter and we don't even want a quadcopter, so let's change this to airplane for the platform. Now the mixer preset is where we choose our aircraft, and right now it's on a flying wing. But we pull down here and there's a lot of choices. We could choose a flying wing with differential thrust, for example. Now I'm going to be using a standard airplane with differential thrust. We can choose that and this is what it looks like. That'll be good for the FT Legacy. You can see my ailerons are on S4 and 5 and my rudder is on 6 and my elevator is on S3. Let's click load and apply. It says overwrite, so let's hit save and reboot. Now it doesn't reconnect when it reboots. It says something about failed to close serial port. No big deal, just hit connect. We got another message, PWM motors and servos will not work, use the configuration tab. Okay, no big deal, we'll just go there. So on the configuration tab, we'll enable motor and servo output, and then click save. 
Now back on the configuration tab, I like to enable don't spin motors when armed because it's not a quadcopter, it's an airplane. Let's select PPM RX input for a receiver and then go ahead and save it and go to the ports tab. Okay, reconnecting and going to the ports tab. Okay, I have a problem because I think there was a note that says PPM won't work unless you disable CPU-based serial ports. And here's the note right here. You can read it yourself and take it all in. So we're going to go back to the configuration tab and look for the CPU-based serial ports. They're down here somewhere. Here they are. Let's go ahead and disable those and then go ahead and save. So we'll go back to the ports tab and now we can see we only have three entries for serial ports instead of four. We want to enable Serial RX on UART1 for the receiver and then enable the GPS on UART2. And then go ahead and save it. Let's go back to configuration and you can see it's all set up now for PPM. Now you can see we could enable GPS but I don't have one plugged in right now. But if you wanted to connect one I'll show you the wiring diagram. Now if you were to connect to GPS, you could connect it to RX2 and TX2 right here. Now we're not going to use a compass because the compass isn't used on planes, in fact it just gets in the way. But if you did connect a compass, you would connect it up here on SDA and SCL. And if you look back at the ports tab, you could see the GPS is on UART2 and that's that TX2 and RX2. And when connecting the GPS, make sure the RX goes to the TX and the TX goes to the RX. And then you could go to your receiver tab and if your receiver was bound to your radio, you could see this working. And you could pick your channel map. I usually pick this one. And you could set your RSSI. I usually choose channel 8. That's because I'm not using analog RSSI. My RSSI comes over a PPM channel from my receiver. So for the failsafe, I think I'm going to use return to home. I think that would be good for airplane. We don't want it to just land or drop out of the air. So that's what I'm going to choose. So let's go to the modes tab now and set up angle mode. I think it's okay where it is and I'm going to use uh, channel 5. That's fine for me. So let's set up horizon mode. So let's put horizon mode up here like that. And you'll have to set up a switch on your radio for channel 5. So when the three position switch is in the first position, you won't have either of these modes and it'll be acro so that you won't have any stabilization. In the center position, you'll have angle mode, which is stabilized. And in the third position, you'll have horizon mode, which is angle mode in the middle, but at the extent it has more of an acro feel for more control. Now you could add a return to home switch, but I don't think the return to home option appears until you have the GPS set up. So we'll probably have to add that later. Now let's look at the OSD tab. This board comes with a built-in OSD. It's the MWOSD, and you can configure it from the screen within iNav. Now you can change any of the settings or add settings or delete them, like you could add heading, and then you could take it away. So these are all the features you can set, and you can configure it pretty much the way you want, or just leave it like this. Now I like to put my units on Imperial. You may not want to do this, but I like it. And I also like to put this on Auto up here for the camera, and then go ahead and save it. Okay, let's go back to the configuration tab. Now if you have your board turned around backwards with the arrow facing backwards, you might want to change the yaw. I set mine to 180 degrees to account for that situation. And you can change some of these other parameters depending on how your board is orientated. So let's go to the servos tab. And in my situation on my airplane, I had the ailerons reversed in the way they acted according to the flight controller. So it's very handy to have this reversing option. So I reversed S4 and 5. And these refer to the pins that we have back on the diagram for our flight controller. Now in the motors tab you can calibrate your motors once they're all hooked up. Just enable them right here and make sure your props aren't on. Then run the master all the way up. Plug in your ESC, you'll hear the beeps. Then pull the master all the way down and that'll calibrate them. So this is just a general setup for an airplane with differential thrust. But I'll go ahead and hook up the receiver and the GPS and we'll just see what that looks like. So here I have the flight controller with the receiver connected and bound to the radio. So you can see when I move the ailerons you can see the roll changing. And when I move the elevator you can see the pitch changing. You might even hear the plane moving. This is the yaw for the rudder and this is the throttle. Then we have the mode switch that we set up in the configurator and this is angle mode and this is horizon mode. And that's on channel 5 as you can see. And I configured my easy UHF receiver to come in on channel 8 on the PBM stream. Now channels 10 and 11 are my pan servo and my tilt servo. You can see me moving them right here. And they are not configured in iNav at all. They hook directly to my easy UHF receiver. 
Now channel 12 is my return to home. I was able to configure that because the GPS is now hooked up. Now what I didn't show you was the calibration for the accelerometer. Now you don't have to do the compass calibration because a plane doesn't need a compass. It's not even necessary. Now you have to click the button six times. Put the flight controller in the upright position and click it. Then put the flight controller in the other five positions and click the button after each change. Now when you get done, these three numbers at the bottom for the axes should not be 4096 anymore. If they are, it means you didn't calibrate correctly. Okay, let's look at the modes tab and you can see when I move the mode switch on the radio that that operates correctly now. Now down here we have return to home. That option popped in once I enabled the GPS and you can see it works with the switch. Whether it actually works in flight, I don't know. Now just a note, I had to make a CLI change, so I went down into the CLI. The reason for this, I wanted to make the scale for my RSSI come out from 0 to 100, but it was showing 81 on the screen. So what I did was I typed in set RSSI underscore max space equals space 81 and then saved it and that changed the 81 on my display into a 100, so that was the max. There's also a min, so if you had like 20 on your minimum, you could set that to 20 and get that to be zero. The cool thing about the min-max settings is you can now handle inverted RSSI signals by making the min high and the max low. Now I know this tutorial didn't seem very organized. It's hard to go in a linear fashion. It'd be nice if you could just go from tab to tab configuring each thing in order. But unfortunately, some things won't configure on one tab until you change something on another. So that's the way it ends up. So that's a general overview for an airplane with differential thrust. And it doesn't cover every single aspect of iNav. I don't claim to know everything about iNav. So you might have to do some research, get onto the GitHub wiki, the iNav wiki, and just look and see what you want to do with yours. So thanks for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe because I'll probably do some more videos on this subject to get into some of the different areas in more depth, especially if you ask questions and you want to know more. All right, talk to you later.